Thank you, music team, for leading us in those songs, and uh, thank you for those that uh, were decorating this week as well, as we have uh, some beautiful uh, Christmas decorations. I said it, I said the word, Christmas. It is uh, quickly coming, and, uh, and these, these uh, decorations remind us of that, and uh, we enjoy their beauty, so thank you. you take your Bible and turn with me to Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28, and we will uh, observe uh, a few things regarding this uh, pillar that we will refer to as uh, evangelism this morning, evangelism. Let's just pause for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come to your word, as we uh, hear it, think about it, meditate upon it, as we would seek to, by your Holy Spirit, understand what it has to say, not just for its original context that it was in, written in, but for our lives today as well. So thank you, Lord, for uh, giving us your word. And I pray that we would be encouraged and strengthened in it, that we would be further equipped in our walk with you today. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. Uh, that we have some notes available. If anyone uh, would like one and you didn't get one of the bulletins or an insert there, there are some notes available. And I almost forgot again to mention that. But if you slip your hand up, we've got a couple of fine-looking gentlemen who will help you out in that department. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 are very significant verses for us. And I'm going to read them, and then I'm going to, after I've read them, I'm going to read them again, because I want us to slow down a little bit and to think about these verses, okay? Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Okay, that's Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Now, Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Those verses commonly referred to as the Great Commission. Jesus, following his death, burial, and resurrection, just before he ascends to heaven, gathers the disciples together, and he speaks to them. He speaks these words, and he gives them some marching orders. He gives them a commission of what they are to participate in after he ascends to heaven. This is very much a natural progression of what has been taking place in their lives uh, up until this point. And even last week, our focus was on spiritual growth and discipleship. So not only do we come to know Christ as our Savior, but then we want to grow in Him 
and learn uh, who he is and learn what it is to be a disciple, which is a Christ follower, one who follows Christ. And now he is commissioning them to go and repeat the same process that, that they have been a part of. In, in the lives of others. And so this concept that we refer to as evangelism is telling others of the gospel of Jesus by public proclamation or personal witness. Telling others of the gospel of Jesus by public proclamation or personal witness. Now, I think it's interesting. Um, I'm going to invite you to come back uh, for a moment to M Matthew chapter 9. If you would just flip back there, and that's the portion that I had read earlier as our scripture reading for this morning. And... Notice in verse 35, it tells us what Jesus himself was doing. It, Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. So what he is doing there is the same thing then that he begins to tell the other disciples, uh, the disciples to do uh, later on in Matthew. Still, still in uh, chapter 9 here, uh, we have Jesus then uh, saying to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, in verse 37. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So, Jesus is uh, uh, for he's, he's preparing the disciples beforehand for what they will be faced, and he's helping them see that other people need to know the same message that they have received from Jesus. And so they spend their time uh, going out and about proclaiming that message. And so we have that commandment given, that great commission given. Uh, in Matthew 28. There are many, many places throughout Scripture that kind of give us a sense of, of what it is to proclaim uh, the gospel, to tell the gospel of Jesus. Now, here's one in Acts 14, that, and, and it's, uh, it's Paul and his companions, and it tells us they, they fled to Lystra, to Derbe, and to the surrounding country, and there they continued to preach the gospel. And the Greek word uh, for that phrase, preach the gospel, is where we get our English word of evangelical or evangelistic or evangelism. That's where it comes from. So they continued to preach the gospel and when they had preached the gospel to that city, city and had made many disciples, it tells us in Acts 14, and it continues on. So they are proclaiming the gospel that Jesus had told them to proclaim, the gospel that Jesus himself had proclaimed. Another example would be in 2 Timothy 2, where uh, Paul says to Timothy, what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So there is the sense in which you are to learn what it is to be a follower of Jesus. You and I, disciples of Jesus, we learn what it is to follow him. But then there's also a, a very important component. It does not simply stay with us. It is something that is passed on to others. Uh, we teach others who will be able to teach others. And so making disciples who make disciples is what evangelism is. Um, we, we, whether it's proclaiming the gospel in a public way such as I'm doing here, 
um, if it is uh, sharing with someone one-on-one -on -one in, in somebody's living room or, or someone that you are working with. There are so many different contexts for which we can share the good news of Jesus Christ. But the idea being that we're proclaiming the gospel, and part of that is that we are making disciples who make disciples. Because that's what that Great Commission is telling us. If you look at those verses, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, you see a number of words that point us in the direction. For example, there is the going here. Uh, and, and it is a sense in which, uh, as it says in verse 19, go therefore, as you are going, is the idea. As you are journeying through your life, as you are working, as you are at home with your family, as you are connecting with someone online, as you are uh, living your life as a follower of Jesus, you are to be involved in discipling others and helping others to become followers of Jesus. And so the words going and making, uh, we are actively involved. It speaks of baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it is the work of a person publicly proclaiming then that they are a follower of Christ. Teaching, um, very much a, a part of that discipleship process that we talked about last week. And also very much a part of it is, is obeying, teaching them to observe, to, to obey the things that God has for each one. And it's not enough for us to just have... Um, a class in theory and say, okay, these are important truths, but it is about obeying that which God has called us to. And we learned something about obedience in, in the adult Sunday school class earlier on. That is uh, what evangelism involves. I would encourage us to uh, ponder then uh, how often can you think, when was the last time that you had a gospel conversation with someone? And uh, I'm not going to put any specific parameters on it other than that, that it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to follow a, a particular formula, but when was the last time that you talked with someone who is not a follower of Jesus uh, about what it is to be a follower of Jesus, about what it is to, uh, to know who Jesus is, to know what Jesus has done for us, to uh, invite people to, to faith in Christ, to speak of it and talk of it in, in that way. And for some of you, you may be able to say, well, that wasn't very long ago. I can remember a conversation the other day, and you would just continue on. For others of us, it, it might be a much longer period of time. And I just want to prod us in this. I think that we're, we're pretty good at, at uh, learning the Word of God in the context of these four walls. But do we talk about Jesus with others? If He is truly important to us, then that will come up. You'll notice that in the, in the Matthew 9 passage that we read earlier, there was some healings that had taken place. And, and they were actually told not to share this. But, but they disobeyed that order. And they went ahead and they shared it. And there were multiple reasons for, for why they were uh, told not to share it. But they couldn't contain it, it would seem, that something so significant and good had happened within their lives that they wanted others to, to know about it. When you and I come to faith in Christ, there is such a transformation that has taken place, whether we even are fully aware of it or not, on a spiritual level, the transformation that has taken place is so huge and you and I are called to share that.
with others. You will notice that that is a part, we're not quite at, uh, at uh, talking about Christmas-themed things in our messages here yet, but that is a, a very much a part of what happens at the, the Christmas events. They come and they see who Jesus is, whether it's the shepherds or others, and then they go and they tell. They come and they see, and then they go and they tell. It, it's it's the transformation that takes place. They're affected by that, and then they go and they tell. When something significant happens in your day-to-day -day life, uh, you very quickly want to share that with others. And you often do. And you uh, are excited about the details of that. Well, it, it's no different uh, in our relationship with Jesus. If it has had an impact on us, then it is something that we want to be a part of. So let's, let's uh, just think for a few moments um, some things to consider as we would tell others about Jesus. I think we would understand that Scripture has called us to this. This message was not just for those 12 disciples at that particular time. This message was for all of us. And we, as followers of Jesus then, are... Um, helping others to also hear about Jesus and to know him. So here's some things. Number one would be the responsibility that we have. This really isn't a suggestion, and uh, some have even referred to it in that way, that, that this is not a, a... We don't call this passage the great suggestion, or the great, uh, if you feel like it, sort of passage. It's not that. It is a commission. It is a commandment. It is what we are to do, that we are to communicate the good news with those around us, and that there is a, a sense of responsibility, a sense of responsibility that we have. And you don't have to go very far, but to uh, turn again to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 is a, a, a passage that, that just follows this extremely um, closely. And beginning at verse 6 of Acts chapter 1, it says, When they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So there is this reminder then that this is God's pattern this is God's purpose for us, that, that we would live our lives not uh, just thinking of ourselves and what will benefit us, but living our lives for God's purpose, which will involve the ful fulfillment of His purpose in others' lives as well. You and I get to be a part of what God is doing in other people's lives. So we do have a responsibility. It is something that we should take seriously, that if I don't share with this person, who else will? Now, in God's plan and God's sovereignty, he, he will ensure that the people who will place their trust in Him, that they will hear and respond. But His plan is that He, he uses people who are connected with other people. For instance, we've talked about this before, that parents, your, your children, you have such a huge responsibility to communicate the truths of God to your children. No one has a bigger influence on them than you do. There are many who are attempting to steal that influence. We have a responsibility to communicate the truths of the gospel to our children. That's just one example. 
God has placed you in a work environment, you're around other non-believers, part of God's role for you is to live a life that, uh, of integrity, you're living out the gospel, and then you are communicating the gospel to those co-workers, and you have that responsibility, and on and on we can go. Neighbors, relatives, others that God brings into our path that maybe we have had no connection with. Would this be a good place to talk about world missions? Absolutely. We have a responsibility to share the good news of Jesus, whether it be in our own neighborhood or around the world. So thankful for what we are able to do in those regards. Secondly, Uh, There's a need for others to hear. So this just kind of flows right in. We have a responsibility to share, but there is a need for others to hear. And uh, I know we're flipping around to a few spots, but come with me to Romans chapter 10, a passage that that you, uh, many of you know well. Romans chapter 10. Let me pick it up at verse 11 and, uh, and just continue to read for a little bit. Romans 10, beginning at verse 11. For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching, without someone evangelizing, without someone sharing the truth about Jesus? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. The passage goes on, but I will stop there. So there is a sense in which we need to share. And there is an understanding that unless we share, others will not hear the good news of Jesus. And that is so true in our culture today. We might think, well, it's just in faraway places around the world. Uh, Those are the only corners of the earth where people have not yet heard. And yet uh, we know that in our post-Christian culture in which we now live, that you and I can be neighbors with people who have never heard. And that is very common in our culture today and becoming more that way. So how will others hear? Well, there are many, many means that people, that believers use to, to uh, get the word out, but you and I have a responsibility to be a part of that, to enable others to hear. And so uh, if you'll notice that usually the way, um, if, if someone's going to hear something, there's usually something that they, something being shared that they have to hear. Unless you're hearing things, that's the way it works. So what is being shared? Well, the, the truth of the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So many places in scripture that we could uh, go to to explain the gospel, to tell people who Jesus is. And, and there is, uh, I hope that you have a, a bit of a, a plan or some things in mind that when the opportunity arises or when you deliberately want to share Christ with someone, that, that you know of some places to turn in, in your Bible uh, where you can look that up, where you can share about a particular thing. 
that can be challenging. It can be hard. And yet there are so many tools available. On my desk right now, I have, and I've shared this before with some of you, that I have a New Testament that belonged to my grandfather. And right in the front of it, he's got written in about six scripture references that describe the plan of salvation. Mm, Romans Road sort of stuff. And, and it's there. And uh, he would, uh, from what I, because he passed away when I was quite young, but from what I have been told, he would very often uh, share with someone about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The beauty of that. You and I need to have some kind of a plan. Uh, even introduce Christ into a conversation. You may be talking about the weather, but how do you get from there to Jesus? And so there are various uh, things that you can do just to naturally bring the conversation to talk about him. If it's important, if something is important in your life, then you would want to talk about that thing or what it is. And so it is with Christ. We share him. So number one, we have a responsibility. Number two, there is a need for others to hear. And then lastly here, uh, there is a promise as we do this, and that is in our, our Matthew 28 passage. Uh, as we do this, Jesus says, I am with you always to the end of the age. We do not speak about Jesus on our own. As a matter of fact, if you are doing that, that's what Scripture refers to as operating out of the flesh, out of our own resources, and that was never God's intention. He, from the, the very beginning, has said that the way that we live, the life that He's called us to live is with His strength, with His power, with His resources. And so here He promises to be with us uh, through it all. And as we continue to share the good news of Jesus, God's presence is with us. And back to the Acts 1-8 passage, His power is with us through the Holy Spirit to enable us to speak for Him. Because all of us, we fumble and we stumble. I, I do that all the time. Uh, I do that while I'm standing here. I, certain things that, that I, I afterwards I'll say, I wish I'd have said that better. And we do those things. We do. We're, we're just human instruments. But we can be so thankful that the Holy Spirit of God is at work in our hearts and in our lives. And the truth that He wants to communicate, if we are willing, He will let that truth come through, through His Word and through His Holy Spirit. Our covenant of membership at the church here uh, again, some, a, a document that you may not look at very often, but it says this, We shall seek by example and word to lead men to Christ. And I think men and women is, is the idea, to Christ. And we shall endeavor to live soberly and righteously and godly in the present world, abstaining from whatever is not becoming in the Christian character, and as baptism signifies our death to sin and resurrection to holiness, so we shall seek to walk in newness of life. So uh, even in our, our documents, it would, it would say this, this understanding that it's important for us to uh, lead others to Christ. And we do it by word and by example. And so the, the lifestyle that you live does say something about what you believe. And others are attracted to the things of God uh, if they see a positive representation in you or they are discouraged from um, turning toward the Lord and may actually turn away from the Lord as a result of our inconsistencies or our hypocrisies. And so there is a sense in which we need to be careful. There are some uh, scripture passages, I won't go into those, but I've um, even referenced a, a number of them just in passing. And then all of these resources that are listed there are uh, available at our resource center, and you are able to um, uh, read up on some things there. And that's kind of what we do as disciples of Jesus. We, 
We are learning and growing. We haven't arrived. And so there are many things, tools available to help us in that regard. Just as we uh, wrap up, uh, let's look at this verse. Just read that over for a moment. So evangelizing is proclaiming the good news of Jesus. And one way to proclaim is through our words. Um, according to this verse, another way that we proclaim the good news is by the love that we have for one another. And, and this is how individuals will know that we're a follower of Jesus. When we have this uh, sense of God's love at work in our hearts and in our lives. And so may that be of what every one of us are endeavoring to be a part of. As we would seek to share Christ, may it be in the context of love. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would enable us to be able to share the good news of Jesus with those around us. I pray that you would give us boldness and courage. Thank you that you are with us, that you will provide the resources that we have need of. Lord, help us to get a sense of, of the lostness of people around us. We thank you for what you have done for us. I pray that we would just know the urgency of sharing Christ with others. I pray that in, in this week that we are beginning now, this upcoming week, that that we would take advantage of opportunities to share and that we would uh, be, be encouraged by how you are at work, not only in our lives, but in the lives of those that you are drawing to yourself. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.